So today's um, session, <clears throat> I'm going to um, deliver in a staggered fashion, um, hopefully without making you stagger, staggering. Um, so uh, uh, the first little bit here, we're going to just go over this little exercise that I just gave out, bring us back into uh, memory, sort of what it's like to work with these models. We'll take a look at results of this little scenario, and I'll get it. Um, following that, I'm going to have a retrospective on yesterday and um, talk a little bit about some of the things we saw, some of the themes um, that were brought out in yesterday's exercises and uh, examples. Um, I'm then going to uh, go and uh, spend the morning going over hybrid modeling, some aspects of hybrid modeling, um, particularly uh, hybrid with uh, discrete event simulation and agent-based modeling on the one hand, and then separately um, a system dynamic simulation and agent-based modeling on the other. And uh, hopefully by the time um, that uh, lunch is approaching, we should have uh, built um, two hybrid models that are thought-provoking and that illustrate um, the interface between, uh, how the interface between different types of modeling can confer value greater than either method in isolation. Um, uh, on the basis of, um, of that and with that sort of in hand, uh, we're, we're then going to switch uh, topics and um, there'll be a series of uh, kind guest lectures. Um, uh, Jeff will, uh, actually um, I'm hoping that Jeff can lead with a discussion of, of a uh, interesting little case study that is a hybrid model, um, a hybrid model uh, concerning anemia management and the dynamics at a biomedical level of, of um, hemoglobin um, within uh, individual patients and how that relates to uh, the caregiving environment and particularly the management of those patients by doctors, by teams of doctors, okay? So he's going to be looking at this kind of, um, in a way, it's a hierarchical model where you have patients, each associate with a doctor, patients have these dynamics which are going on at the basic level and at the higher level, this multi-scale model, really, um, you have some dynamics associated with switching patients from one reg treatment regimen to another. Um, and uh, Jeff will be kindly offering, is kindly offering to, to show that model. Um, following that, I'm hoping that Dylan will be able to uh, give a little bit of, uh, of a talk. That's great, Dylan, thanks. Um, which would um, uh, discuss best practices um, associated with uh, modeling, um, getting you to think about some important um, principles, uh, applying them within your modeling process. Uh, and Anatoly um, here from AnyLogic has um, kindly offered to give you a, a glimpse of some of the things coming down the road with subsequent versions of AnyLogic. Um, he might also be someone that you could ask, uh, he and actually Dylan, who has lots of experience with the GIS side as well, could ask about some of the GIS functionality of AnyLogic, if any of you are particularly interested in that side. Um, uh, there'll be a, a lunch, and um, and uh, following lunch, um, uh, Jeff uh, and or Dylan will be um, commenting. Uh, Dylan may may give a little bit of a briefing on this health library we've been working on for any longer, um, conceptualizing what these building blocks might be that would really leverage work in health. Some of them are more specifically related to health and others are sort of general tools that are, are direly needed in health but could con convey value, uh, confer value outside of health. Um, uh, Jeff has also, um, again, kindly offered to talk about model conceptualization, um, which is one of these early stage activities that's so fundamental, particularly this idea of shaping the scope of your model, what's endogenous, exogenous, ignored, and evolving that. And um, he's offered to talk about that and, and process side issues. I'll then be, be returning. Um, I'm going to be uh, stepping out a little bit uh, over lunch. And uh, I have a um, prospective meeting with um, 
some very different sorts of, of uh, collaborators uh, with, a, with a Honda and with an Echidna and maybe with a few wallabies and kangaroos to boot. Um, and I'm really excited. Um, um, th their appreciation for any logic is not foremost on, on the agenda, but, um, but I'm looking forward to meeting um, the denizens of Down Under. Um, and then, uh, so I'll be coming back, um, hopefully without a kidna spine so. <laughs> and embedded. And uh, we'll be continuing on for a variety of topics, including um, dealing with stochastics, parameter variation, systematically varying parameters and models. Um, uh, we'll, we'll have at least a brief discussion of calibration and how it's used in models and how you can go about accomplishing this in any logic the tools that you can build on, on which you can build. And uh, finally, um, uh, I'll also have a little thing on performance. Performance gotchas, things to watch out for, because that's been a question I've been getting from several people. At least three, three people have sort of uh, brought up performance questions. Um, so I'll be, um, uh, I'll be uh, giving a little thing on performance, and then uh, other topics as time allows. Um, I understand that um, that some people have to leave early for flights, et cetera, and we'll have to bear bear with that. And as normally, I'll try to craft my comments to speak to the questions of the group. Okay. Um, so uh, again, you'll you'll have to excuse me for uh, stepping out uh, midday, but um, I'll have to hoof it across town. Um, uh, okay. So that's the plan for uh, the day. Um, uh, any questions right now, um, just about sort of the logistics side? We'll come to more general content questions in a bit. Questions on logistics? Any big topics you hear I, I didn't just say, but you'd really like me to cover? I'd be happy to take those topics. Yes? Resilience. Systems resilience. Okay. Um, that, that interface is a little bit with some of the things that uh, Dylan's going to discuss and some of the design of this library to have sort of self-adapting systems that will auto-configure and so on. And I'll see if when he briefs you, following his briefing, I'll see if I can tie this in a little bit to the resilience issue, okay? Because um, when it comes to fault tolerance, when it comes to adaptation to take advantage of new situations, um, uh, it, um, some of the mechanisms he'll be discussing are directly relevant. And I'll look to him to sort of introduce them a bit, and then I'll talk about their implications for resilience. Okay? Good. Yeah? Something about the blogging. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Masa. Um, okay. Uh, Jeff, could you, um, uh, could you uh, remind me to see if I can fit in something about debugging? Um, I have a whole lecture on debugging. And um, you'll find videos of me using um, debuggers with any logic, but also giving a lot of suggestions for, um, for, for a, a systematic process to go about and some, some tools within any logic itself you can use to kind of uh, speed up the debugging process. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll see if I can do something on that. Okay, great, great idea. Jeff, maybe you could remind me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Totally. So, totally. And this is uh, one I'm actually hoping to do this morning. If possible, if we can make good headway on these hybrid examples, I have uh, an exercise picked out on exactly that issue. And I think we have, a, we have a decent chance of making it through both two types of hybrid modeling and, um, and getting the essentials of that open population. Um, open populations are, are wonderful, um, uh, wonderfully straightforward within any logic, and I'll see if I can give you the essentials of that. Okay? Okay, great. Other questions or requests? Okay? Great. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop my, my recording here. Um,